A monk seeking guidance from Zhoshu, the master of a Zen monastery, asks Zhoshu if he will teach him the way to enlightenment. In response, Zhoshu asks the monk, Have you eaten your meal? The monk replies, Yes, I have. Then go wash your bowl, says Zhoshu. At that moment, the monk was enlightened. Right off the bat, you might find this anecdote to be abrupt and confusing. With further thought, you might try to figure out why, what the meal and the bowl might represent, and what the metaphorical lesson might be. After more thought, you might conclude that it all appears to have no point. With this, you would be correct. It doesn't. However, in this discovery, you would have realized the point. The point being to not have one. So I guess technically, you would have also been wrong. You might find this completely contradictory and foolish. Again, you'd be correct. This is also the point. With only a little dissection, this simple, seemingly pointless riddle reveals to be a whirlwind of regressive contradictions and confusions when put through the analytical mind. How can it have a point by not having one? How can it mean anything by not meaning anything? How can one argue for it and against it at the same time? This paradoxical and brain-breaking riddle is known as a koan. A koan is a riddle or dialectic meditation device used in Zen Buddhist practice that is intentionally designed to, at least on the surface, be unclear and obscure. Its point is not to provide a conclusion or answer to the question presented, but rather to disregard the relevance of the answer, to detach itself from the functions of conclusion and singular resolution. There are over a thousand known koans that follow this format, used to test and challenge Zen Buddhists and reveal the obscurity of life and the limits of the mind. In general, life is uncertain, confusing, and paradoxical. As hard as we work against this, it mostly remains so. No matter our efforts, every time we believe we have some understanding or control over life, like water in the palm of the hand, the tighter we squeeze, the further it eludes our grip. Sciences, religions, and philosophies make sense of the world through various methods, some more successful than others, but nonetheless, all face the inevitable limits of themselves, the human mind, and the time in which they are erected. By sheer lack of alternatives, we understand the world with thoughts and words, through which we can create systems of order and understanding, like logic, story, social structure, and so on. This can greatly assist our ability to survive, coexist, communicate, deal with physical stuff, and so on. However, thoughts and words, of course, can only describe and understand the world with thoughts and words. As a result, they cannot make sense of what exists beyond thoughts and words, which a great measure of life arguably does. Like any tool, thinking and language are limited to the confines of their abilities. Like a hammer cannot screw in a screw, and a nail cannot cut a board of wood, the human mind cannot make sense of the mindless. A hammer can perhaps smash a screw in, and a nail can perhaps split a board of wood, like the mind can perhaps consider life. But none of these items or tools fully suit the jobs they are carrying out, and thus will fall short in their abilities to properly complete them. A koan embodies this notion, as opposed to most stories, ideas, and answers that attempt to fight against the concept of obscurity and absurdity in life by using defined structure, logic, and resolutions, the koan harmonizes with the absurdity of life and disregards the need for conclusive answers. In rough terms, Zen in general is founded on this synchronization with the obscure and abstract. To put it in context, Zen is a subset of Buddhism, which was founded and initially practiced somewhere around the 6th century in China and then further popularized in Japan thereafter. Buddhism is considered by many to be a religion, but unlike most religions and even most philosophies, Zen Buddhism is not concerned with concrete ideas and concepts, and thus is not really much of a belief system at all. Rather, it is considered to be more of a state of being. In other terms, it is a way of living in accordance with one's limitations to articulate and understand things in any absolute sense and living more off intuition and spontaneity, which even here misses the mark by attempting to use words to describe it. Paradoxically, in the attempt to define Zen, you have already incorrectly defined it. Alan Watts, a famous popularizer and philosopher of Eastern ideas, especially that of Zen Buddhism, explained that Zen is trying to point to the physical universe so that you can look at it without forming ideas about it. Instead of saying life is this or that, Zen says life is, and what is is unclear and always changing, at least in terms of words and ideas. Which is to say, the universe is not to be packaged or structured in some human or rational way, even if it could be 
but rather it is to be experienced from the perspective of a passenger to it, flowing with it and avoiding attachment to things within it that might make one stuck or rigid. It's as if we are all swimming or floating down a river, in which there are rocks that extrude out of the river's surface. These rocks represent various things and ideas that might be appealing or seem reasonable to grab a hold of and stop ourselves from going further down the river. However, if we stop to hold onto a rock, we stop moving. The water continues to flow beneath us, yet we remain stuck and rigid. Zen suggests that in this, we will begin to experience an increased pain and suffering that arises from being attached to something and disconnected from the fluid movement of activity happening around us. In Zen, this movement is referred to as the Tao, or the Way. At risk of adding further confusion and paradox to an already confusing and paradoxical thought experiment, a koan does not appear to suggest that we should cease asking questions or thinking about the answers to questions or anything of that sort. Koans did not spring up out of lack of thought or contemplation, but out of a specific sort of contemplation, a self-referential thinking that denies its ability to be a single, concrete, and universal thing that answers or understands what might exist beyond itself. Zen and the lesson of the koans suggest that we should flow with life, ask questions, contemplate them, but not become tricked by any singular idea or answer that might tempt us into a final resolution for it is likely nothing more than a mirage of the mind. This is, of course, extremely difficult, especially since we tend to extract our identities out of our beliefs and ideas, and thus our mind works very hard to hold on to them. Arguably, it is unlikely that we will ever be able to fully avoid being tricked by this function of the mind and ego. Even holding on to the idea of not holding on to any ideas is in fact holding on to an idea. However, perhaps by considering the lesson of the koans, the more practical point is to help remind ourselves of the playfulness of most things, to see through the contrived, to take ourselves a little less seriously, and to open up to the possibility of new ideas, experiences, and people that we might otherwise feel disconnected from or in conflict with. Just like how the center of a tornado is calm with little to no motion despite it being surrounded by a coil of rapid violent winds, we can live in the center of the tornado of knowing and unknowing and still remain calm and at ease despite the surrounding storm of contradictions and paradoxes. Regardless of our religious, philosophical, or spiritual beliefs, perhaps the lesson presented by the koans applies to all. All our sciences, philosophies, religions, and everyday questions inevitably will face the limits of themselves. A koan and Zen in general let us know that this is okay and points us to the bigger picture the riddle of which all riddles and stories emerge. And like all great riddles, this bigger picture must remain unclear, funny, obscure, and open to interpretation to be it at all.